Today's video is a compilation clip from the best effects I've done so far. Select your clip, make it a new fusion clip, and go to the fusion page. Hit command and space, search for the camera tracker, and add it to your clip. Go in the controls panel, check the preview auto track locations. Adjust the sliders until you've got enough tracking points, and hit the auto track button. In the camera tab, you can give the information about the camera you used, but I will just leave it like this, and let the AI daemon do the work for me. Go to the solve tab, ignore everything and hit the solve button. When it is finished, check the average solve error number, anything below 1 will be good. If you have a higher number like I do, then you need to select the red tracking points through your clip, and hit the delete button. When you've deleted all the red points, hit the solve button again. Check the error number, if it is lower than 1, then you are ready. Go to the export tab, and hit export. It will give you all these nodes, move them closer to keep things organized. You don't need the camera tracker anymore, delete it and disconnect your clip. Take the tracker render node and connect this one back. Select the 3D merge node and add it to the preview window. Now you have a 3D tracking points with the camera movement. Import your Polaroid photo in the workspace, add an image plane 3D node, and connect it to the merge 3D node. Go to the transform tab, and move your image in 3D space. Rotate it, move it around, scale it, and place it where you think is good for you. For the Polaroid photo, simply Google one and place your photo inside the borders. If you are that lazy, I will leave one in the description. Do the same thing for every photo you have, and connect it to the same Merge 3D node. You will end up like this. One thing I forgot to mention, is that you have to select the ground plane node, and under the visibility tab, uncheck the visible box. You can now go back to the edit page. Duplicate your clip, go in the last frame, right click and select change clip speed, Check the freeze frame and hit change. Delete the other part, stretch your freeze frame and place it next to your first clip. Right click on it, make it a new fusion clip and go to fusion page. Add a polygon mask, check the invert box and draw a mask around the shape you want to cut out. When you have finished with the mask, add a small amount of soft edge. Disconnect your clip, and start adding the followings. Image plane 3D, merge 3D, camera 3D, render 3D, and connect the render node back. Drag your merge node to the preview window. Select the image plane 3D node, go to the transform tab, and move it to the z-axis until it is lined up with your frame again. Copy and paste the first three nodes, and connect it to the merge node. With this image plane node selected, go in the transform tab, move it back in z-space, and adjust the x and y to reposition it properly. Repeat this process as many times you want. When you are satisfied with your copies, select the camera node. Make sure you are in the first frame, and go in the transform tab. Add a keyframe for the x, y and z value, go in the last frame and move your camera in the z axis until the last copy. Change the x and y position of the camera to point the cutout in the middle of your frame. Move the camera through the cutout until you are left with a blank image. Select the render node, go in the setting tab and activate the motion blur, increase the quality and shutter angle. Go back to the edit page, select both of your clips and move them up. Take your second clip and bring it below the fusion clip. Add a drop warp transition in the beginning of your fusion clip and keep it short. Add a new adjustment clip on top, trim it down and place it right in the middle of your clips. Search in open effects, and add the dent effect to the adjustment clip. Go to the effects tab, and change the dent to type 3, increase the size, and change the position. Decrease the strength and add a keyframe in the middle of the clip. Go in the beginning and the end of clip and bring the strength back to zero. Just to blend things better, add a short camera shake before the adjustment clip, and your transition is ready. Open your clip in Fusion page. Add a Merge node. Hit Command and Space, and add an Edge Detect node. Connect your clip to the Edge Detect, and add a Glow node. Connect the Glow node to the Merge node. With the Glow node selected, increase the brightness, and decrease the spread and shine threshold. Select the Edge Detect node and play around with the slider until you've got the edges you like, and change the mode to grayscale. Go back to the glow node and add a color for your glow. 
Select the merge node and change the apply mode to screen. Add a fast noise node, drag it to the left viewer so that you can see what you are doing and connect it as a mask to the merge node. With the fast noise selected, go to the color tab, change the type to gradient and the gradient type to radial. Move the start point where you want your glow to start. Select the first color point and bring down the alpha. Select the second point, change the color to black and bring down the alpha. Add a new point in the middle, change the color to white and bring up the alpha. Go in the noise tab, increase the seethe rate, and adjust the noise to your liking. You can adjust the shape even more in the color tab, by dragging the gradient points. When you are ready, find the frame from where you want the glow to start. Copy and paste the start positions to the end positions. Activate the keyframe for both positions, go few frames forward, and increase the end point until the glow covers all of your image. Now that you've animated the glow, you can go back and fine-tune the shape of it. To make the glow disappear, select the merge node, add a keyframe for the blend slider, in the frame you want your glow to be still visible, go few frame forward and bring down the blend slider to zero. Go to the Google Earth website. Open the map style menu, and select the clean map. Zoom into the location you want. Take a screenshot, zoom out, take one more screenshot, make some more shots while zooming out. Once you get all the screenshots you want, import them in your library. Bring two of your drone shot. One longer and one closer shot. Keep them at the same size, make each one a new fusion clip, and open one of them in the fusion page. Disconnect your clip. Bring the last screenshot you've made. Add a crop node, and check the keep scented box. Arrange the nodes to keep things cleaner. Add a merge node after the crop. Bring your next screenshot, the one that is a bit closer. Copy the crop node and add it after the second screenshot, connect it to the merge as a foreground. Select the merge node, decrease the size, and move it around to match the position. You don't have to make it perfect, because later on we are going to add a heavy motion blur. Connect the merge node to the out point. Add a new merge node, and repeat the same process for each clip you are adding, keep in mind that you don't need to use the crop node in your drone shots. Once you are done, add a transform node in the end of the pipe. Move the pivot point to be in the place where you want to zoom in. Increase the size and you will see this ugly collage. Select your long drone shot, add a polygon mask, and draw a rough shape around the middle, and increase the soft edge slider bravely. For the last drone shot, add a rectangle mask, match it to the size of the clip, and increase the soft edge again. Select the transform node, and increase the size until your last shot is covering the entire frame. In my case 420 works fine. Right click in the size slider, and select to modify with anim curves. Go to the modifiers tab, change the source to duration, the curve to easing, and set the in and out to expo. In the scale value, set it to the amount of scale you need, in my case it was 420. Set the offset to 1, and increase the time scale if you want the zooming in to be faster. Go back to the tools, in the settings tab, check the motion blur box. Increase the shutter angle around 1000, the quality to maximum, and play around with the sliders to find out what works best for you. When you are ready with your edit, go to the fusion page. As you can see we have two nodes, media in, and media out. Let's add few more nodes, a background node, paint node, and a merge node. Connect the merge node to the media, in and out nodes. And the paint node to the merge node. Select the background node and set the alpha to zero. Hit command and space and search for the glow effect. Add it between the paint and the merge node. Basically this is it. Go to the paint node and you can start a paint at your image. By default the multi-stroke brush is selected, this is what we need. Choose the color you'll want and adjust the size of the brush. The general idea of this effect is, draw, one frame forward, and draw again. Go frame by frame like a psychopath and paint whatever you like. Let me adjust the brush setting and I am ready to start drawing. Right click to your clip, make it a new fusion clip, and open the fusion page. Add a merge node. Bring a drip node in empty space, connect your clip to this node, and the drip is a foreground to the merge node. Change the frequency to 1.4, and the amplitude to 0.33. Right click in the phase slider, and select modify with anim curves. Go to the modifiers tab, and increase the scale to 3. After the drip node, add a flicker addition. Increase the range somewhere between 0.4 and 0.5. Decrease the speed, and increase the smoothness all the way up. Uncheck the flicker for the green channel, and decrease the randomness scale. Add a glow node after the flicker addition, decrease the shine threshold, and increase the spread and the brightness. When you are satisfied with the distortion, select the merge node, and add an eclipse mask to it. 
Check the invert box. Move the mask to have your subject in the middle and increase the soft edge slider. You can play around with the border width also. Open your clip in the fusion page and add a merge node. Bring a prism blur node in empty space. Connect your clip to this and drag it to the left viewer. Increase the blur strength, the aberration distance, and the aberration strength slider to your liking. Add a glow node after. Bring down the shine threshold to your liking. Right click to the gain slider and select to modify it with shape. Go to the modifiers tab and bring down the smoothness slider to your liking. Connect the glow node to the merge as a foreground. Select the merge node and change the edges to mirror. Set the apply mode to screen. Right click to the center value and select to modify it with shake. Go to the modifiers tab. Set the smoothness slider to 40. Change the minimum to 0.45 and the maximum to 0.55. Add another prism blur after the merge. Adjust the sliders to your liking and increase the vignette size slider. Add an ellipse mask to this prism blur. Adjust the size and the position of the mask. Check the invert box and increase the soft edge slider. If you want more compilations like this, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next. I'm clearly running out of ideas.